Church. I'm Pastor John. I'm so honored that you are with us on this Sunday, November 15th, as we begin our worship. Let us now have our confession of faith. Because you, God, made the world and intended it to be a good place, and called its people your children. Because when things seemed at their worst, you came in Christ to bring out the best in us. So, gracious God, we gladly say, Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, truth is stronger than lies. Because confusion can reign inside us despite our faith, because anger, tension, bitterness, and envy distort our vision, because our minds sometimes worry small things out of all proportion, because we do not always get it right. We want to believe that goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, truth is stronger than lies. Because you have promised to hear us, and are able to change us, and are willing to make our hearts your home, we ask you to confront, control, forgive, and encourage us as you know best. We proclaim that goodness is stronger than evil, Light is stronger than darkness. Love is stronger than hate. Truth is stronger than lies. Lord, hear our prayers and change our lives until we illustrate the grace of the God who makes all things new. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer of the day for November 15th. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7, and then 12 to 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, 
The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end, he will make all of the inhabitants of the earth. This ends the reading. Our gospel today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man, let me start <laughs> over, sorry. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had taken had, had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made you five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward. <clears throat> Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they will have will be taken away. For as for, as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This ends our gospel. Grace, peace, and mercy to you all from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So my mom and dad always told me stories of my grandfather on my mother's side. He designed and built his own house up north. He planted enough trees on his land and property that either my sister or I could one day build a modest house with the lumber from those trees. He was a gunsmith and a machinist, and he made phonograph needles as a hobby. This man had many talents and gifts. Talents and gifts that, unfortunately, he was never able to share due to his alcoholism. That got so bad that I was never able to visit with him or even really get to know him, other than the stories my parents told. My dad, on the other hand, 
Well, he knows how to fix just about anything around the house. Growing up, he taught me how to refinish woodwork, how to repair furniture, how to fix my bicycle when it completely fell apart one day. He taught me how to reseat a toilet, put a new screen on a window after I had poked a hole through that screen. My mom, she taught me how to cook, how to sew, and even how to type. My parents, they shared their talents and their gifts with me. And for that, I feel that I'm a much better person, more well-rounded. I only hope that someday my kids will be able to learn just as much as I learned from my parents. That I will be able to share my talents and gifts with my boys so that they can pass it on as well. Now each of us have talents and gifts that we can share with other people. The talents and gifts that we all have are a gift from God given to us to make the whole world, all of God's creation, a better place. God gives us the gifts that we have as we have abilities to use them. While these gifts and talents that we have are unique and differ from one another, all of our gifts and talents are equally valuable and needed for God's kingdom. Don't ever let someone tell you that you don't have gifts or talents to share because God has blessed you in many different ways. And sometimes it just takes time to figure out what those gifts and talents are in our lives. In the Gospel, we hear how the talents that the servants received from their master were not just given to them, they were entrusted to them. Now these talents that the servants received were actually money. The master entrusts these talents into the care of his servants. To entrust something to someone also means that that item that's being entrusted is to be cared for, watched over, and used carefully. To entrust something to another person means that we are to protect it so that it can be used and then passed on at a later time much like a family heirloom that's handed on from generation to generation. Those heirlooms are entrusted to us. We hold on to them, we care for them, and sometimes we even use them, like those old watches or that china set or tools passed down in the family. They're passed down so that future generations be able to use them and cherish them and enjoy them. We call this stewardship. And the same thing happens with our talents that we have in life. Now, from a Christian perspective, all that we have, our lives, our talents and gifts, along with our money and all of our possessions, are used, are ours, to be used while we live on this earth. And while we use them, we must also recognize that we really don't own them. Because all that we have truly belongs to God in the end. It is God who has given us all that we have, and when we pass into God's glory, we know that we can't take any of it with us now, can we? God has abundantly given us all things in life to be used for our pleasure. And what God has given to us, it ought to be shared with others and with all of creation so that everyone may benefit from what God has given to us. Much like those gifts and talents that my parents shared with me when I was young, I am now able to use them and share them with others with the hope that they will use those gifts and pass them on in the future. In the Gospel story, the first two servants, upon receiving their talents, which in this case is money, immediately went out and traded in order to increase that amount that they had. They did not wait to use what their master had given them, for they did not know when their master might return. They used the gifts that their master had entrusted them with a sense of urgency. These talents, these gifts, were not to be squandered, not to be placed on a shelf for later use. They needed to be used right now. Now, Jesus uses this story as what's called a parable, a way to help us understand what the kingdom of God may be like. 
We are all given talents, time, money, and various abilities in life to be used for the building up of God's kingdom here on earth. With these talents and gifts, we are invited then to go out and use them right away. Use them immediately to build up God's kingdom here and now. We ought not wait. In Matthew's story, we hear time and time again that there is no time to waste. There is an urgency about God's kingdom coming to earth. As we look around our world today, I too sense that urgency. An urgency to spread the good news of Jesus Christ in word and in deed. Today, because of the coronavirus, unemployment has been at a high not seen since the Great Depression. Our food pantry is seeing numbers not seen in a long time, if ever. In the next few months, I'm convinced that we're bound to see evictions and homelessness increase because people are not able to pay their rent due to not being employed. We will also begin, I believe, to see many churches and congregations forced to close because they no longer have the resources needed to continue doing the ministries that they have been called by God to do. There is a deep sense of urgency these days in terms of our society in order to hear the good news, to hear of God's love for all of creation, and to share all that God has given to us with those who are in need. The first two servants immediately went out and used what their master had given them to build up their master's kingdom. Sure, it was risky. Trading money like on the stock market can be dangerous. You can lose it all. At the same time, if you do nothing with the money that you have, you won't gain anything either. There's a term that I hear used often when people try to make decisions, and that term is called analysis paralysis. And what this means is that we tend to get so caught up in the details, the analyzing of the decision, only wanting to do things if they are 100% sure that it will work, that we get scared about taking risks. We get scared about trusting God and living in faith. So we stop doing anything at all. We hide our talents and our treasures in the ground. Or we put our money under the mattress. We close down our ministries. We find it increasingly hard to move and to breathe and to live. We live a life of fear, much like the third servant did in the story, who not only hid his money in the ground, but he did not act like the others with a sense of urgency. I'm so grateful for this congregation of United Lutheran Church, because when the pandemic hit, we stepped up. We continued to give to the church, to continue our ministries. We continued in worship, albeit differently. We continued our food pantry and our meal programs. We collected school supplies that went to Jerstead Algerholm. We added Bible studies and online fellowship times. We utilized the gifts of technology. We gave money to Outreach for Hope in order to help other congregations in need. And we gave money to the Racine Interfaith Coalition to help immigrant and refugee families during this time. We worked with Jesus Alive Ministry and Refuge Temple to make sure that they could continue doing their ministries using the gifts of our old buildings. We use the gifts and talents that God has given to us and as a church and as individuals to continue ministry to our members and to the larger community. And I am positive that we here at United Lutheran Church will continue to do so well into the future. In this parable, we note that those servants who used the talents in, that their master gave to them resulted in them being invited by the master to enter into the master's joy. And I love that little phrase in this story. Enter into the master's joy, he tells his servants. So what do you think it means to enter into the Master's joy? What do you think it means to enter into God's joy? I believe that God wants nothing more for us than to be happy in life. 
And not just happy because our bills are paid or we have food on the table or our health is okay. Because I believe that there is a deeper spiritual joy that comes from using the gifts and talents that God has given to all of us. There's a deeper, more spiritual joy that comes when we experience and are a part of the building up of God's kingdom. I'm always amazed talking to youth after they've served uh, at a food pantry or a soup kitchen or helped in some service project. Because what I find is that these youth are always happy after serving others. They recognize that they do have gifts to share and talents to share with those in need. They recognize that they are able to make a positive difference in the life of another human being and indeed in the life of the whole world. They recognize that they are not alone, that they are an integral part of something much bigger. And the same is true with us adults, isn't it? When we are able to use our gifts and our talents, when we are able to share our knowledge and wisdom with others, there is a deep and profound joy that we feel. It is that joy that comes from God. A deep joy that we are now invited to enter into when we use the gifts and the talents that God has first given us. How often have you ever felt down in the dumps? Felt alone or sad? Thought that your life, or perhaps the whole world around you, was out of your control. But did you ever find that when you shared your gifts and your talents, all those negative feelings changed? Perhaps it was singing in the church, serving at the meal site, making a quilt or knitting a hat for a baby. Maybe it was realizing that you had enough money and food to share with someone in need, or that you were able to give a simple phone call that helped both you and the person on the other end feel not so alone. When we share our God-given gifts and talents with others, when we use what God has first given us to help others, to build up God's kingdom, it is then that we are able to enter into the joy of our divine Master. It's a perfect joy, a moment when we, feel that, when we feel that we are much closer to God and much closer and connected to all of creation. When we use our gifts and talents, we also realize that we really have an abundance in our lives, don't we? In the story today, the Master tells the first two servants that they have been trustworthy in a few things, and now they will be put in charge of many more things. What I believe this means for us is that when we use our gifts and our talents that God has first given us, we will overcome that scarcity mentality, you know, that thought that I don't have enough. How can I share with others? We find that when we use God's gifts and talents, we have more than enough. We are able to share with others. We lack for nothing. For God has given us all that we need and now God entrusts us with even more. As we continue in these days of uncertainty, these days of feeling that there isn't enough to go around, days when stores run out of toilet paper, days often filled with fears of what's next, let us place our hope and trust in a God of abundance, a God who has entrusted to us his kingdom, and invites us to help build it up here on earth. Let us not hide what God has given to us. Let us go out and use it with a sense of urgency, knowing that the world right now needs God's help and healing probably more than ever before. And we, each and every one of us, have been entrusted with certain gifts and talents that can be shared and used to help this broken and hurting world. And when we do that, we are promised to enter into our Master's joy. Amen.
peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share that peace with those who are with you at this time, or those who might be walking around outside, or just creation that you see out your window. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated as the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with a passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in all the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing to others. Help us to contain and stop the spread of COVID-19. And now we lift up those who are in need of healing. Bonnie, Cal, Judy, Doris, Jim, the Willis family, Linda, Benny, and Cy, and all those we lift up in our hearts and aloud at this time. We also give you thanks for new life, especially for Maggie, Ryan, and Mary, who are now expecting a child. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all leaders, we pray for all those who are elected to office in America. Lead us in a peaceful transition of power. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors, especially Jean and Jeanette. Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray with the words our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now guard the good treasure entrusted to you, with the help of the Holy Spirit living in you. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you with grace, mercy, and peace, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Live, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God.